your work. Right, and and they're to some extent they're doing you a favor, right? right. Mm -hmm. But to a larger extent, again, they need good content. They mm -hmm. have they have other people they can produce. So if somebody's, you know, it's. See it, at least see it for what it is. I don't know what you can do about that attitude. I don't know what you can do to 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 stop that person from thinking that way or that institution mm -hmm. from thinking that way. But what you can do is you can see it for what it is, okay. and it's manipulation to make you take less, to make you think that you're less valuable than maybe you are, right? So at least see it for for what it is as, as a manipulation. Um, and then again, I, I would just you know you have to have your walk away points. Uh, everybody, when they're new in a career, and, and, and even further afterwards, I mean, I've been surprised how how much uh, I can go higher and higher in my career in terms of uh, people respecting me as an authority. Mm -hmm. I still got to eat crap just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a boss. Everybody's got you know got to got to uh, compromise their uh, what they think they want to do. Right, so you have to balance that. Okay. But they do want good content, and, and uh, they can't say, your play's great, we want to produce it, by the way, we're doing you a favor. It mm -hmm. just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I was very interested by this question over there. Um, are they telling you basically the reasons they want or rewriting a certain thing? Are they adding, or is it talking to people? What is the extent of your initiative? Well, I guess the, you know, there's, there's many, there's, there's many changes they suggest. Some of them are good. Some of them, as you said, like I resisted at first, they wound up being good. But I guess it was more the point of that it always goes to the nuclear option instead of just sort of being in a conversation. Yeah. Because like you said, there, I mean, this is somebody who's produced like 60 things off and on Broadway. She's just like very aggressive. You yeah. Know, it's like the minute you say, well, and she says, well, then we don't have to produce your play. It's like, whoa. You know, yeah, I've, like, so I've dealt with that too. And what, is the, what is a good comeback for you that? Know, yeah. Well, there's not. You didn't meet me at the band shell, so I want a divorce. Right? <laughs> uh, there's, I, I don't know. I mean, you can point out to her, it's like, you know, is it going to be the nuclear option that it's your way or the highway? Because then, then you need to know going in. I, I, I mean, it's a sensitive situation. Uh, you don't want to blow your, your Broadway debut. Um, but by the same token, you don't want to have a Broadway debut that um, that's a flop and doesn't represent your work. If it's going to flop, at least it should be your work that flop. It shouldn't be your compromised work that flop. Because yeah. yeah. your name's going to be attached to it. The producer will go and produce another play. Yeah. Um, I think I spoke to a few people here about it, about royalties. I'm a floozy. <laughs> uh, I have Google Alert. My I have like eight, ten minute plays published, and I have Google Alerts out, and they're being done all over. Never gotten a penny, and I did something even. How funny. do you know that they've been done all over? Cause because you. Because I see it. there. I see. I get a Google Alert. I say where you know when I have my stuff. Yeah. And I get emails to myself, and I see a play of mine was done in Michigan last week. No money. Um, well, that's you know. Are you registering your works at the Copyright Office? <coughs> no, <coughs> the published ones are not copyrighted, except they're published. They're published by whom? Um, just as an example. All right, this is a bad example. Because is anyone with Smith and Krauss? Because they just sent us this email. Right. So S Smith and saying, Krauss would typically. Well, they're not doing it anymore. We just got an email a couple months, a month ago, that Smith and Krauss is no longer handling our royalties. No, but they're the they usually handle to make sure that your copyright is registered. They said just put at whatever they see they see where your play was produced and it's okay. That's what they say. Yeah. Now the royalties go to us. I mean, we have to be in charge of royalties. <coughs> what and are they I'm, doing? Then why well, what I want to say to them is, excuse me, I've never seen a penny from you guys. Yeah. And then within ten days, I got a contract from. A com uh, my first uh, college textbook, 6,500 copies, what do I charge? Floozy. Right. Again, because I'm sure I put well, down the wrong thing. Well, you call the Dramatist Guild and say, what are, what are the standards here? I, I don't know the standards off the top of said, my head, but it's usually yeah. like a, a textbook you would say it's prorated according to what other people yeah. are getting. Most favored nations clause, I don't get anything less than it, on a proportional basis than other people. So there, so you right. can handle that. Right. Well, first, you should register your copy. You people. should make sure that all your copyrights are registered when you're sending them out. If you're doing a bunch of eight to ten minute plays, 
make sure they're registered as a collection if you want to save that money. So once you register, then you can sue people, then you get attorney's fees, then you get a prima facie, which means a, presumptive, a presumption that you have a valid copyright. <coughs> so you want to register with the U.S. Copyright Office, that's a copyright.gov. And online I don't want to hear it's anything. cheaper, I know that. What's that? It's cheaper if you just it's do it online. It's cheaper to do it online. But I don't want to hear anything you know, about the WGA registering yeah, yeah, scripts. Yeah. That has nothing to do with anything. It, it's, right, right, it doesn't right. give you any more rights than you have mm -hmm. sitting here today. Uh, I don't want to hear about mailing it to yourself. That, right, that right. doesn't do any good. You have to register it with the Copyright Office. Mm -hmm. The second so, thing is when you find out when somebody's doing your play, most of the times these aren't sinister people. There's not someone <laughs> twisting his mustache at the other end of the internet uh, <laughs> taking your play. They're just being careless. Um, but they they usually respond pretty well to a, to a mellow email that goes out that says, look, I just noticed you've done my play. I typically get one dollar for this, for this yeah. uh, kind of production. Can, you send, can I send you a uh, one paragraph contract and you can sign it and send back a check for one dollar? Yeah. But it's, it's the floozy part that gets to me is that I'm, I, I, some of my responses, because I do write to them. People have written to me on Facebook, I love working on your play. And when they hide it under, the, under a title of, you know, like, and then, if, you know, there can be a title where your own title is not in it. Yeah. So I'll even find out that way. And usually I do a mentorship kind of thing with them <laughs> instead of... Yeah, instead I would, saying, I would start I'm easy with the one dollar and ramp it up yeah. from there and, and just get used to it. Get, you know, make sure getting, you know, part of being comfortable in your own skin is trying new things and, and developing that additional zone of comfort, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll take one more question then I have a conclusion remark to make. But any other questions? Sir? There's a local company here in town that is doing its own one-act, ten-minute play festival. Yeah, they're not paying the playwrights. That's fine. They're not because they're not paying the directors. They're not paying their actors. What gets me what is, is that in their thing they send out at the beginning, they aren't giving any comps, and they're expecting anybody working on this show to pay for tickets. Well, that this is really the lowest of the low. To I, me. I, I, <laughs> I think so. I mean, on 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 one on one level. Uh, yeah, I don't understand they're not paying the people. If they were paying you and they said no comps, that would be different because then I would have this respect for them yeah, that says yes. that's right, they're in it to make money, they've got the right priority. But uh, but yeah, that doesn't, that's... But different. you could say no to your play being done. I could, yes. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, okay. It, I, I, would, I would agree. I, it's true. I think that we, we are, we don't value ourselves, I think is what you're saying, and we forget to value ourselves a lot and, and early on in my career as a director it was exactly the same thing. No, yeah, I, I have to still remember to put a value on um, what I do and I think the one dollar thing is a really, I think that's really an important thing to remember for us all because I also think that if we had said to that, um, my place not being done, that particular artistic director, I really believe that I should be able to get comps for this if you're doing my play, but we don't even say that sometimes. Right. We forget to say the first words that put value on ourselves. Well, and keep in mind that with my theory, and I would feel comfortable with this, is, is, is this gentleman said, I, I insisted on one dollar, exactly. and I got one dollar, but, but there were no comps. They're still making money off of you if you have, if you want to go see the play. But the author should be able to go see the play anyway. I mean that that's yeah. a given. Yeah. The, the author sees. I mean you're part of the of the production. So if uh, if you're a member of the guild, that's something we would write a a, a, a letter to that artistic director about, saying the author. I can see how the author's family shouldn't be talking, <laughs> but the author has to has to see the play in action. No, but he's just. I, clear, I, I love the letter. Yeah, where I'm, it says no comps. It's dirt cheap. Everyone can afford this. Only those participating in the festival are free. So I assume that. Oh, yeah. oh the, yeah. that I misread it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, listen. The world the world needs great artists, and if you want to be one of them, you're going to have to figure out a way to make a living at it. Okay. <laughs> Um, and that means knowing the business end of, of your profession. Uh, if you sincerely attempt to know the business, you're going to develop critical thinking skills. Now, all critical thinking skills at some level can be reduced down to A equals B and B equals C, therefore A equals C, these kind of syllogisms, logical statements. But, uh, but it's, it's much more interesting than that. Uh, these critical thinking skills that you develop in, in improving your business sense uh, they're about, it's about human nature. You're, you're developing critical thinking skills about human nature. 
uh, you, there's a couple principles. One principle that I love is that you can trust people to be themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So this producer uh, that this gentleman has a, 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 with this Broadway production, I guarantee you that he knows that when, when there's a confrontation about a certain change that she's going to do the nuclear option. Well, then I won't do your play. You can trust her now. <laughs> right? you, you know something about her. You can trust her to be yourself, herself. Um, but also, you can, you know, with a situation like that, you can consider what's going through the other person's head. There's something that she's trying to get at. She doesn't want to waste time, probably, with an amateur, right, or something like that. That's probably what's going through her head. So now you know something. That's that's your theory. You have a thesis about this person. She's trying to approach me. She wants to save time, and she, does, she doesn't want to have to spend time on my inexperience. She wants to save time like that. So you can react to that. You can try a strategy. If that's the case, if that's what's motivating her, maybe this will work. That didn't work. Maybe something different is motivating her. Now you're learning something about another human being. And, it's, and I find it very enriching. Um, so in conclusion, four things. Don't be a floozy. <laughs> Get it in writing. Join the Dramatist Guild yeah. and be intrepid. Thank you. Thank you.